Welcome to Imagine It down here at Imagination Station, joined once again by Chief Scientist Carl Nelson. And uh, well, we have at least one bright idea, soon to be bright idea, <laughs> exactly. laid out on the table. What are we doing? So it's an incandescent light bulb, right? We've, we've phased these out in favor of LED lights mm -hmm. because these things are incredibly inefficient. Yeah. Go ahead, turn that on. This is a 200 watt light bulb. Ooh, okay, wasn't expecting and, the brightness on that. But feel over near it. Don't touch it, but feel near it, right? I, just here at the button, I can feel it, but. It's, uh, it's a 200 watt light bulb. Only about 5% of that energy that we're putting in there is being converted into visible light, which is hard to believe because it's really bright. Right. But that other 95% is just heat energy. We used to have these in the studio lights, of course, too. Mm -hmm. So on a summer's day, it wasn't great. Just saying. Okay, so what I, what I want to talk about, though, is how these things are sort of created and why they sort of don't just burn out right away. I mean, mm -hmm. eventually they do. So inside this envelope, this, this uh, enclosure, there's usually inert gases, argon, nitrogen, something like that. The idea is to keep oxygen away from the filament. Because the filament can get 4,000, almost 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, mm. right? And so if you had oxygen near that, the filament would rapidly oxidize. So I've taken a light bulb just like that and I've broken off the glass cover mm -hmm. to expose just the filament here. And so what I want to do is... Again, don't try that at all. Yeah, there's just broken glass there, involved. There is very sharp yeah, yeah. so we're going to be careful with that. Um, but we're aware of it. So what I want to do is, if I, if I were to just plug this in now and turn it on, it would, it would just go, right? <laughs> there's no fun in that. So what I'm thinking is we need to recreate this environment and we're going to do that using some liquid nitrogen. So I have this flask here, we're just going to pour some liquid nitrogen in and of course, you know, the liquid nitrogen is always vaporizing, always mm -hmm. changing into nitrogen gas. And so our flask near the bottom has liquid nitrogen, but near the top, it's filled with nitrogen vapor, which is exactly what could be inside this light bulb. Every light bulb's a little bit different. Some mm -hmm. have krypton, some have argon, um, but I can guarantee that they do not have oxygen inside. And we can show you why in just a second. So I'm gonna take this and we're just very carefully gonna push it down into this container of okay. liquid nitrogen. <laughs> when you're stopping up the lip there too, it's hard to shoot up there. The fluid right. dynamics so are So we're adding some heat energy, that, that glass and that bulb yeah. were, are a little bit warm, just being at room temperature. But now, let's get rid of this guy. That's gonna be too bright for us. I'm gonna plug this in and I'll give you the honors, Dan. Go ahead and flick that on. Whoa! And a real subtle thing that you kind of alluded to is you can see that this liquid nitrogen now is boiling much more vigorously. Turn it off for a sec and it would take away that heat energy, it cools down. A little bit less so, yeah. It's a little bit, it's, it's calmed down. Go flip, flip back on. And rapid boiling, right? When that filament reaches 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe it's not getting that hot in here, um, it adds energy to the nitrogen. And Dan, go ahead and lift that up. Just, yeah, just Still keeping up. it on? Yeah, leave it on. Yeah, it's, 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 you're not gonna get shot. So right there, right there, perfect. So now we've left the liquid and now we're just in that space where the nitrogen gas is. Again, no oxygen, our bulb is gonna burn just like it would inside the glass envelope. And if you pull it up really slowly, again, a little bit higher, a little bit higher, we're gonna see how high we can go. Hold it right there. So again, liquid nitrogen boiling, creating a nitrogen atmosphere up here. There's no, no to little oxygen there. And if we go up a little bit higher, right there, wow. And, done. boom, it's done. All right, so this is live now. It just kind of lightly disconnects too. Yeah, and it just, just on the side, just, let's just turn <laughs> if this I off. I could see. <laughs> right, I, I can't see that, right. spots. But you can see the filament kind of bounce in there, right? Mm -hmm. So the filament has just burned out, all because of that oxygen in the air. And so that's why the filaments last so long in these bulbs, is because there's no oxygen in there. There's a bit of a vacuum involved in there too? So really sometimes? really inexpensive bulbs are just evacuated. Okay. Oh, so there's no inert gas So there's gas no in inert gas. There's just no gas. There's a subtlety <laughs> in how the tungsten sort of boils off and it, it vaporizes. You probably remember old bulbs when they were about to burn out, they would be sort of um, darkened on the yeah. top. And that's because the tungsten was actually boiling off the filament and then coating the bulb. Yeah. So there's a little vapor deposition going on in there. And so that's what the nitrogen does. The nitrogen stops the tungsten from evaporating and forces it sort of back onto the filament. Okay. Um, and then there's subtleties too. Some light bulbs will have a filament that's oriented like this mm -hmm. um, because there's a little bit of convection that happens inside and that adds to the lifetime of the bulb as well. So. Yeah, those larger spirals we kind of start out, those more Edison light bulbs, I guess, and this one, it's still curled, but it's more yeah. concentrated. It's like a foam cord almost. Well, interestingly, this is a coil of a coil. 
This, oh. if, you, if you were to unwrap this whole thing, it'd be about 23 inches long. Wow. And the reason they do that is it, it limits the amount of tungsten that boils off the filament. So a, a coil of a coil. So you coil it up and then you make a coil of that. <laughs> which is, there's all sorts of subtle things that go on in, uh, in, a, in a light bulb like this. And we've moved on from and we've this moved too, on. generally. We've moved on, we've moved on, yeah. Because they're just so inefficient. Oh, that is really cool though. Well, perhaps <laughs> literally. <laughs> all right. And really inefficient. Filamentary, my dear Nelson. All right. <laughs> I'm Dan. That's Carl. That is how you imagine it.